I have got a video on how to flash Blackbox firmware to your OpenLog device. I've got a video about where I like to buy my OpenLog devices from. And I've got a video on how to hook up your OpenLog device. And I've got a million videos on how to interpret your Blackbox logs and work with your Blackbox logs once you've got Blackbox installed. But I am missing a video from that series. And that is how to actually configure CleanFlight or Betaflight to use Blackbox. So that's what this video is. Let's get into it. I am going to connect to my flight controller. And the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the configuration tab and you need to enable the black box option. That needs to be enabled. If that's not enabled, black box will not work, period. The second thing you need to do is you need to go to the black box tab. Now, if you haven't got a recent version of the Clean Flight Configurator, I'm working with 1.2.1, you will not have a black box tab, and these options will need to be configured with a command line. But there's no reason for you not to have a recent version of the Configurator. It should auto-update. It's a Chrome app, so you should be fine here. But if you don't have a black box tab, it's probably because your Configurator is out of date and you need to update it. You can do this with a command line, but why would you? I'm going to go to black box, and then I'm going to choose whether I'm going to log to the serial port or to an onboard data flash chip, or if you have one of the few flight controllers out there that has an onboard SD card reader, you'll see a third option, which will be the SD card reader. So where are you going to log to? You should always have the option to log either to the serial port or if you have a data flash chip, to log to the data flash chip. If you don't have a data flash chip, you'll only see the serial port. Okay. My board is the FPV model X-Racer F303. It has an onboard data flash chip. I could log to it if I wanted to, but I prefer to use an open log device. Now let's take a little side trip here and let me tell you why that is. The advantage of the open log device is that it logs to an SD card, so you can log for basically forever. Like really, like weeks, literally weeks of logging time on a 16 gig SD card. The downside of the serial port is that it only runs at 250 kilobaud, which means that you can't log at faster than about one kilohertz, roughly. Which means that if you're running your loop at four kilohertz, you're going to need to do one to four logging ratio, and you're going to be, technically, you're going to be losing some data. My experience is that as long as you're logging at at least one kilohertz, you still are getting adequate information for tuning and troubleshooting. The fact that your PID loop is running at 4 or 8 kilohertz, you don't really need to log that fast. But if you're a developer, for example, if you're somebody like Boris or Digital Entity who's trying to really push the bounds of the firmware, maybe you really do want the full 4 kilohertz or 8 kilohertz logging. The advantage of the data flash chip is you can basically log as fast as you want. The data flash chip is very fast. Another advantage is convenience. It's just included with your flight controller. You don't have to do anything. It's just there. This could be a real advantage if you've got a very tight build, like a Mixuco or a Krieger or another build where putting an open log device on there might just not be very easy. The disadvantage of the onboard data flash chip is, number one, it's not very big. The X-Racer F303 flight controller that I have has a 16 megabyte data flash chip and that is the biggest of any flight controller that i know of on the market there are a few others out there that tie it i don't think there's any that beat it many of the flight controllers out there have an even smaller data flash chip sometimes as small as two megabytes that is enough to log for a few minutes now that's enough to do a little bit of tuning or a little bit of troubleshooting but it's certainly not enough to go out there fly all day come back, pick through your logs, look for the interesting stuff. With a data flash chip, you have to know beforehand what it is that you're going to want to be logging and when you're going to want to be logging. With an with a open log device logging to an SD card, you can just log all the time and not even think about it. The other disadvantage of the data flash chip is that you have to download the data from the clean flight configurator over the USB port. Now, USB is fast but serial over USB is slow. It takes forever to download this data. Downloading a 16 megabyte data flash chip log, it might be 10 or 20 minutes of flight. It might take you 40 minutes or an hour to download it. I'm not exaggerating. So if you don't want to sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait, then use the serial port. 
or use one of the boards that has the onboard SD card reader because that really is the best of both worlds. The onboard SD card reader can log as fast as it needs to because there's no serial interface. It's direct, it's direct connected to the flight controller but it has the essentially infinite storage of the SD card. So that's really the best of both worlds. So we're gonna choose what we're gonna to log to. In my case, it's a serial port, and we're gonna set the ratio, the logging ratio. Now, in my case, I've got it set one to three. I'm running at two kilohertz, so I could technically run at one to two and still beat my standard of one kilohertz logging rate, but I like to go to one to three, which gives me 666 hertz. It's just a little slower, it gives me a little bit of extra buffer to avoid dropouts. If you have a data flash chip, resist the urge to set this to some extravagantly low value. Let's say you've got a very small data flash chip and you can only do one, you know, one minute of logging. We say, well, heck, I'm going to set it to one thirty-second denominator, and then that'll become 32 minutes of logging. Well, that's true, but the logging rate is so slow, and the resolution of the resulting data is going to be so low, that's just not useful for anything. So you want to target a logging rate of about 1 kilohertz. Maybe as low as 3 kilohertz would be useful if you really want to stretch your data, flat, your, data uh, your memory. But don't go much lower than about three kilohertz or you're really going to start getting into a realm where the data is not useful anyway. If you are logging to the data flash chip right here is where you can erase the flash or you can download the flash by clicking the save flash to file button. You might think that if you fill up the flash then it'll just keep recording the last 10 minutes of flight and then when you come home you can just pull that off. That is not how it works. Once the flash fills up, it simply stops recording until you manually click the erase flash button. And the reason for that is that the erasing of the flash is so slow that it's, you can't do a first in, first out sort of rolling cue. You just can't do it. So anytime that you want to record new data, you need to manually erase the flash if you're using the onboard data flash chip. If you're using an SD card reader, of course, you just go in and, you're, you know, and you just delete the files off the SD card like you would any digital camera or any other SD card. Next, we're going to go to the ports tab. And in the ports tab, we need to pick a UART that the open log device is going to be on. Again, if you are using the onboard data flash, you do not have to do this. If you are using the onboard SD card reader, you do not have to do this. Only if you're using a serial port with an open log device do you need to go to the ports tab and tell CleanFlight or Betaflight which serial port Blackbox is on. If you have a free serial port, go ahead and use it. But if, like me, you're using all your serial ports, see this one is being used for my SBUS receiver, this one is being used for smart port telemetry, and that's it. You can put black box on UART1, which in my case is doubling as the MSP. That's the configurator GUI. That's what's used to talk to the configurator here. If we turn this off, the configurator will stop working and we'll have to hard reset the board and lose our configuration. Don't do that. You can run black box at the same time as MSP, and the way it works is when the copter is disarmed, MSP is working, and you can configure the board just like we're doing right now, clicking around these options. When the copter is armed, MSP stops working, the configurator stops working, and black box starts working. So they, they trade off. Now, obviously, it's nicer to have black box on its own dedicated UART so you don't lose the MSP, the configurator, every time you arm the copter. Sometimes you'll be configuring the copter on the bench and you'll flip the arm button to see if you've got your modes correctly and suddenly the configurator freezes up. Oh, what happened? Black box took over. That's what happened. But if, like me, you have a board with only three UARTs, that's pretty much your only option. Blackbox has to be on a hardware UART. It cannot be on a soft serial port because soft serial is not fast enough. There's one more thing. If you're using an onboard device, then you need to configure a mode to enable Blackbox logging. Now, configuration of modes is outside the scope of this video, okay? But you configure the black box mode like you configure any other mode, like air mode or arming or angle or horizon mode. And basically what you do is you set it up so that when you flip a switch on your transmitter, then black box starts logging. If you have the onboard SD card, 
then you can set the mode up. It could just log all the time because you have infinite space. But if you're using your onboard data flash chip, you're going to want to be able to flip a switch to turn logging on and off because it'll fill up so fast. It'll only have maybe at most 10 minutes, 20 minutes at most of logging time, and maybe as little as one or two minutes, depending on how big your data flash is and what your logging denominator is. Okay, that is it. That finishes it up. Now you know how to configure black box and you should be able to get it going and we'll enter the wonderful realm of black box log analysis. Hope that's helpful. And as always, happy flying.